Last week we looked at the importance of keeping equations balanced while we solve them. This week, let's look at a visual model that can help us solve equations. We can use this model both with simple equations and the more complex multi-step equations we will come across in a few weeks. So here is solving simple equations using bar models. Our model is called a bar model because it is made up of bars. One nice thing about this model is you don't have to be exact in drawing it. You do, however, have to make sure that your bars are of equal length because they're representing the same amount. Remember last week we talked about our equations being equivalent on each side of the equal sign? Well, using our bar model, our two bars need to be equal or equivalent to each other. Another nice thing about this is that it also can help you visualize the parts of the equation and their relationship to the whole. We'll have our whole um, represented on this bar and our parts represented on this bar. Let's start with 15 equals 3 plus x. Remember that the order that we put our equation in really doesn't matter because the two sides of the equal sign are equivalent. We're used to thinking of the answer always coming second, and so that's where getting out of that equals vocabulary and changing it to equivalent comes in handy because we can say 15 is equivalent to 3 plus x. So let's identify the parts of this equation. Our whole is 15. So this bar up here on top is equal to 15. Next, our parts. Well, I have 3 and x. I know 3 is kind of small, so I'm going to make my line for it right here. And I'll label this 3. And then the rest of this is going to be x. So now I need to know what x equals. To find x, I'll subtract the 3 from the 15. So 15 minus 3 equals 12. So my x should equal 12. If I solve using the standard algorithm, I would subtract 3 from both sides. So let's look at that real quick. Here I've used my additive inverse, subtract 3 from there, subtract 3 from there. These ones cancel. Now I have x, 15 minus 3 is 12. So you can see that either way, we will get the same answer of 12, whether we're isolating the variable by using our additive inverse or using our bar model and subtracting. Let's look at another equation. This time, we're going to throw some negatives in here. Negative 7 minus x equals negative 21, or is equivalent to negative 21. Once again, I'm going to place my whole on the top bar and my parts on the bottom bar. In subtracting integers, I want to use my rule of add the opposite before I try and draw the model. Otherwise, it gets a little confusing. So here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add negative x instead of subtracting. So now my equation says negative 7 plus negative x equals negative 21. 
you'll notice now that all of our pieces are negative. Even though we're negative, we can still use the bar model in the same way. My hole is the negative 21. And I know that negative 7 makes up part of my parts, and x makes up the other part of the parts. Once again, I'm going to use subtraction to help me find this. Let's go negative 21, and I want to subtract negative 7. Once again, I have a subtraction problem. So I'm going to add the opposite one more time, and then use my rule for subtracting a negative or for adding a negative and a positive number. So 21 minus 7 equals 14. Keep the sign of the larger number negative. And x is going to equal negative 14. Let's try one last problem for today. This one gets a little more complicated because I'm mixing negative and positive numbers. My problem is negative 63 is equivalent to x plus negative 91. Remember, the nice thing about this model is the size is relative. So we can make these bars however big we want them just by writing a number. Again, I'm going to have my hole on top and my parts as the bottom bar. My hole is negative 63. This seems odd because I think of 91 as being larger than 63. And this is where I need to understand what is happening in my equation. The negative 91 is really stretching the whole length of this bar. But to get the 63, it is being, the 91 is being eaten. But to get the 63, the 91 is being partially eaten up by a whole number. You can imagine Pac-Man coming along and munching up part of that negative number. So Pac-Man starts coming along, and he's going to take this chunk out of the 91. The question is, what is that chunk representing? That chunk is my x. So our positive x is actually overlapping the negative 91. We still have to figure out, however, by how much. In this case, Pac-Man has taken 28 bytes out of the 91 and replaced them with bringing it down to the negative 63. Let's look at the algorithm to compare. Negative 63 equals x plus negative 91. First thing we need to do here is use our additive inverse to remove that negative 91 and keep our equation balanced. Because this, even, even though this is an addition problem and we are adding, we subtract to get rid of something, we can look at this negative 91 and we can know, oh, that's really saying subtract. And so the opposite for the additive is positive 91. 
I don't need to go through subtracting the negative in order to get to that positive. If I know that negative occurs, I can just use it. So, I have 91 added to both sides. The 91 minus out of the x cancels out, leaving me with just x. Now I have to take care of this negative 63 plus 91. When I have a negative and a positive, I'm going to take a larger number, subtract the smaller number. 91 minus 63 equals 28. Then keep the sign of the larger number. In this case, 91 is the larger number, which means that our answer is going to be positive. So x equals 28. This lesson was pretty short, but hopefully it gave you an idea of how you can visualize our equations. We will revisit bar models with multi-step equations. So for the meantime, if you are having trouble with the algorithm, try this model to help you see what the parts are for your equation. That's all for today, LHMS.